Welcome to Advanced Bible Study. This lesson is titled, Who is the King of the Locusts in Revelation? Who is the King of the Locusts in Revelation? The end time beast is a descendant from the seed of Satan, and his name is Abaddon. Satan and the fallen angels were cast out of heaven after the fall of Adam and Eve. God cursed Satan for seducing Eve, and he changed Satan's physical state from immortal flesh and bone to mortal flesh and blood. In Genesis 3 verses 13 and 14 it says, and the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent begilded me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. The word dust in this scripture is translated from a Hebrew word, which means earth. The word eat is transferred from a Hebrew word, which means devour. Satan was cast out of heaven to the earth where he would devour it all the days of his life. God changed Satan's immortal flesh and bone body to a mortal flesh and blood body, and Satan eventually died physically. Isaiah 14 verses 9 through 11 says, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirs up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the north. It has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave in the noise of thy vows. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. The phrase, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee, is referred to what happens to the mortal flesh and blood body after it dies. The angels that followed Satan were also changed from immortal flesh and bone beings to mortal flesh and blood beings. They also died physically. In Psalms 82 verses 6 and 7 it says, I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. The word gods in this scripture is translated from a Hebrew word, which means angels. God put enmity between the seed of Satan and the seed of the woman. In Genesis 3 verses 13 through 15 it says, And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent begilded me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel. While they were still physically alive, Satan and the fallen angels birthed children with the daughters of men on earth. In Genesis 6 verse 4 it says, There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. The word giant in this scripture is translated from the Hebrew word Nephilim, which means fallen ones. The fallen ones and their offspring 
were seen on the earth before and after Noah's flood. Numbers 13 verse 33 says, And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. The word giant in this scripture is translated from the Hebrew word Nephilim. The Nephilim and their offspring must have gone underground to survive Noah's flood, since no life survived on top of the earth. In Genesis 7, verse 23, it says, And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both men and cattle, and the creeping things, and the fowl of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. The fallen angels eventually died off. In Second Peter chapter 2, verse 4, it says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, after the death of their mortal bodies, the souls and spirits of the fallen angels were put in hell. In Jude 6 it says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of that great day. After the physical death of Satan, his soul and spirit was allowed to roam the earth in the spirit realm. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Satan's soul and spirit is allowed to roam the earth in the spirit realm until the millennial reign of Christ. In Revelation 20, verses 1 and 2, it says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. The civilization started by Satan and the fallen angels continued to physically exist and reproduce. In Joshua 11, verse 21 and 23, it says, And at that time came Joshua and cut off the Anakins from the mountains, from Hebron, from Debir, from Anab, and from all the mountains of Judah, and from all the mountains of Israel. Joshua destroyed them utterly with their cities. There was none of the Anakins left in the land of the children of Israel, only in Gaza, in Gath, and in Ashdod, there remained. So Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord said unto Moses. And Joshua gave it for an, an, an inheritance unto Israel according to their divisions by their tribes. And the land rested from war. The Bible doesn't say where the souls and spirits of the offspring of the fallen ones go after death. Some students of the Bible believe they are the unclean spirits that roam the earth. In Matthew 12, verse 43, it says, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. The word unclean in this scripture is translated from a Greek word which means something impure or demonic. The Bible says that we wrestle with spiritual wickedness. Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Abaddon is a descendant from the seed of Satan. In Genesis 3 verse 15 it says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel.
Abaddon is the beast in the book of Revelation. And he is the king over an army referred to as locusts that will come from out of the earth in the latter days. Revelation 9 verses 2 and 3 says, And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And in Revelation 9, verses 7 and 9, it says, And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of a woman, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots, of many horses running to battle. And in Revelations 9, verse 11, it says, And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. And in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon. Abaddon will wreak havoc in the earth for three and a half years in the latter days. In Revelations 13, verses 4 and 5, it says, And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Abaddon's ancestry is Assyrian. In Isaiah 10 verses 5 and 6 it says, O Assyrian, the rod of my anger, and the staff in their hand is my indignation. I will send him against a hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mare of the streets. Satan will possess Abaddon and influence his actions. In Revelations 13 verse 2 it says, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him him his power, and his seat, and great authority. The offspring of the fallen ones were extremely intimidating in the Old Testament time period. In Deuteronomy 9 verse 2 it says, A people great and tall, the children of the Anakins, whom thou knowest, and of whom thou hast heard say, who can stand before the children of Anak? The offspring of the fallen ones will be very intimidating in the latter days. In Revelation 13, verse 4 says, And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? The Bible says that in the latter days it will be like it was, during the time of Noah, in Matthew 24, verse 37, it says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. During the time of Noah, the offspring of the fallen ones were very active in the world. In Genesis 6, verses 4 and 5, it says, There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bear children to them, and the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually.
In the latter days, Abaddon will unite with a confederation of countries to fight against Israel. Ezekiel 38 verses 2 through 8 says, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tabul, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tabul. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth in all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomor and all of his bands, the house of Turgomor of the north quarters, and all of his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. After many days thou shalt be visited, in the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Abaddon will also lead this confederation of nations to fight against Christ and the army from heaven. Revelation 19 verse 19 says, And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. In Revelation 17 uh, verse 12 through 14 says, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and king of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Abaddon will rise out of the earth and sea in the latter days to fulfill Bible prophecy. Many students of the Bible believe the increase in UFO sightings might be a glimpse of what is coming. 75% of the American people believe UFOs exist. Abaddon is also Gog in the book of Ezekiel. Gog is a title given to a prince. Ezekiel referred to Gog as a chief prince of Meshach and Tabul. Ezekiel 38 verses 2 and 3 says, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tabul, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog the chief prince of Meshach and Tabul. In the latter days, Gog will come from a place out of the north. Ezekiel 38, verses 14 through 17 says, Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto Gog, Thus saith the Lord God, In that day when my people of Israel dwelleth safely, shalt thou not know it. And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land that the heathen may know me when I shall be sanctified in thee. O Gog, before their eyes, thus said the Lord God, Art thou he of whom I have spoken in old time by my servants, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them? Coincidentally, Gog is referred to as the grasshopper king 
in the Septuagint Bible. In Amos 7, verse 1, it says, Then look, the Lord showed me a breed of locusts that arrived early in the morning, led by Gog, the grasshopper king. The Bible says that Gog will come against Israel in the latter days when they are dwelling safely. In Ezekiel 38, verses 10 through 12, it says, Thus saith the Lord God, It shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages, and I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil, and to take a prey, to turn their hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. The prophet Daniel said that Israel will be invaded in the latter days by an army that will mingle themselves with the seed of men. In Daniel 2 verse 43 and 44 it says, And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Gog and his confederation of nations will be defeated on the mountains of Israel. In Ezekiel 39 verse 4 it says, Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and the people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort, and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. Ezekiel also refers to Abaddon as the Assyrian. The description that Ezekiel gives the Assyrian is the depiction of Satan. In Ezekiel 31, verse 3 and 8, it says, Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches and with a shadowing trout and of an high stature, and his top was among the thick boughs. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches, nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. The Bible says that a king with Assyrian ancestry will come upon the nation of Israel in the latter days. In Micah 5, verses 5 and 6, it says, and this man shall be the peace when the Assyrian shall come into our land. And when he shall tread in our palaces, then shall we raise against him seven shepherds and eight principal men. And they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword and the land of Nimrod and the entrance thereof. Thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian when he cometh into our land, and when he treadeth within our borders. The Assyrians' motives will be to take a spoil and a prey. Isaiah 10, verses 5 and 6 says, O Assyrian, the rod of my anger and the staff in their hand is my indignation. I will send him against a hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge to take a spoil and to take a prey and to tread them down like the mare of the streets. Christ will destroy the Assyrian in the mountains of Israel. Isaiah 14 verses 25 and 26 says that I will break the Assyrian in my land and upon my mountains tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke 
depart from off them, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. In the book of Psalms, the man Usher, who some consider to be the founder of ancient Assyria, is mentioned in a prophecy in which a confederation of nations will invade Israel. In Psalms 83, verses 4 through 8, it says, They have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee, the tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarines, Gebel and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines, with the inhabitants of Tyre, and Usher also is joined with them. They have helping the children of Lot. Assyria was one of seven nations that ruled over Israel in the past. The seven nations that ruled over Israel included Assyria, Babylon, Egypt, Persia, Greece, Rome, and the Ottoman Empire. The Apostle John prophesied that eight foreign kings would rule over Israel, and the eighth king will be one of the first seven. The Assyrian clearly fits into this prophecy, since Assyria was one of seven countries to rule over Israel. In Revelation 17, 10, and 11, it says, And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. Isaiah referred to the Assyrian in the latter days as a fiery, flying serpent. Isaiah 14, verse 25 through 29 says, That I will break the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is proposed upon the whole earth, and this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. The Lord of hosts has proposed, and who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? In the year that King Ahaz died was this burden. Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. God will destroy the Assyrian and his army when they come on the earth in the latter days. And Zephaniah 2 verses 11 through 13 says, The Lord will be terrible unto them, for he will famish all the gods of the earth, and men shall worship him, every one from his place, even all the isles of the heathen. Ye Ethiopians, also ye shall be slain, by my sword, and he will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria, and he will make Nineveh a desolation and dry like a wilderness. The Assyrian army was dealt a heavy blow by the sword of God in the Old Testament. In Isaiah 37, verse 7, it says, Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Christ smote 185,000 Assyrian soldiers in one night. In Isaiah 37, verses 35 and 36, it says, For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake, and for my servant David's sake. Then the angel of the Lord went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians, a hundred and fourscore and five thousand, and when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses.
The Apostle John said that the beast was dealt a serious wound in the past. In Revelations 13, verses 12 through 14, it says, And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. The whole world will be amazed when they see the beast's army. In Revelations 13, verse 3, it says, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. The world will marvel at this army and say, Who is able to make war against it? In Revelations 13, verse 4, it says, and they wash up the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they wash up the beast, saying, Who was like unto the beast, who was able to make war with him? The Bible says that the beast's army will come from out of the sea and from out of the earth in the latter days. In Revelation 13, verse 1, it says, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And in Revelation 17, verse 8, it says, The beast that thou saw was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Abaddon is also referred to as the angel of the bottomless pit. In Revelations 9 verse 11 it says, And they had a king over them which is the king of the bottomless pit whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue his name Apollyon. Isaiah referred to the Assyrian as the angel of the locust. In Isaiah 14 verses 31 and 32 it says, How, O gate, cry, O city, Thou whole Palestina art dissolved, for there shall come from the north a smoke, and none shall be alone in his appointed time. What shall one then answer the messenger of the nation, that the Lord has founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it? In this scripture, the word messengers is translated from a Hebrew word which means angels. The word nation in this scripture is translated from a Hebrew word which means a swarm of locusts. It is not a coincidence that Gog is referred to as the grasshopper king. The Syrian is referred to as the angel of the locusts. And Abaddon is referred to as king of the locusts. And the beast is described as the army of locusts. The whole world will marvel when the beast appears on the earth and God will allow the beast to bring judgment on the earth and wreak havoc for three and a half years in the latter days. Revelation 13 verse 5 says, And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who was like unto the beast who was able to make war with him? Christ will destroy the beast when he returns to the earth. In Ezekiel 38, verses 23 and 23 says, And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood, 
and I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him an overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. God will eventually restore what the beast destroys. In Joel 2 verse 25 it says, I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. The word sent in this scripture is translated from a Hebrew word which means to let loose. Okay, everybody, this will end our lesson today, and we hope that you will join us again for another in-depth advanced Bible study lesson. You can choose an advanced Bible study lesson and chat with us online from our website at www.advancedbiblestudy.com. That's www.advancedbiblestudy.com. If you are interested in what the Bible says about the end times, buy our book, End Time Prophecy Bible Scriptures, by House from Heaven. Again, that's End Time Prophecy Bible Scriptures, by House from Heaven. It is available at Barnes & Noble and at Amazon. Well, until next time, may God bless you and be with you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.